you know, the first service is so, they're so well behaved. It, it throws me off, you know, but now I see I'm amongst my own. So, um, oh, there's, uh, before we get started, you, some of you may know that I was um, in Oklahoma for a week. God bless us one and all, with family for a week, more to follow. Um, and I found myself thinking, gee, I can't wait to get back to progressive Utah. <laughs> so I like to sometimes when there's special events that happen, new babies and that sort of thing, marriages and that sort of thing that happen in the community, I like to acknowledge those. And I know that we have a couple of newly married couples, and there may be others. I see PR and Holly, and I don't know if there's others, perhaps that have gotten married through December 20th. Would you please stand and let us celebrate your marriage with you? <laughs> I said on my Facebook post, yes, me, Facebook. I said on my Facebook post, how wonderful it is that everybody in our congregation that wants to get married can. It's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> so would you please stand and turn to someone and say, thank you for being a blessing in my life. I can feel some new, new weddings about to happen already. <laughs> I know. I just want to mention that neither of those weddings took place in the church, so, you know. <laughs> really? Too soon? What? I mean, I don't get it. Jeez. <laughs> oh, but when you're ready, call, call me. <laughs> That's it. Oh, life is good. We could. So... We did, I and mean, it was amazing. Anyways, I, I have a talk. Oh, yes, here it is. Now I remember what it was. Always excited to start a new year. You know, it's a wonderful thing that happens for us at the beginning of the year. We get clear. We say, this is how my life is going to be. By the end of the year, we're in the holidays and like, yeah, more eggnog, yeah, more candy, yeah, whatever, right? Doesn't matter, new year's starting. So here we are. Back at the beginning, setting new intention, new clarity, new all that, and it's all good. I'm excited that we are launching this new year filled with possibility. I was reflecting a little bit over uh, the last period of time about, I like to do kind of look back, year in review, and what's coming. And so I do that personally and I do that organizationally. And for me, it was really interesting that this time last year we were still homeless. <laughs> and now we have a home. Yay us. And that, that so that was, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we have our own home. Yay. <clears throat> and so looking forward, I, it, this is, gets to be the year of infrastructure from an organizational point of view of like, okay, now we're here. How do we live here? And what new possibilities are emerging? Very excited. Classes start this week. When, you know, we are all about helping you figure out the truth of who you are. As Dana sang so beautifully about remembering that I am that person I want to be. Or as I like to say, I just want to be the person my dog thinks I am. You know? <laughs> She's always just so happy to see me. <laughs> so it's a good thing, right? And so, so we, uh, we're offering a wonderful course. If you've not studied Science of Mind yet, or even if you have and want a refresher, we have two ascended masters in our midst. Myrna and Audrey are going to lead us through a four-week introduction to how this whole thing works. How do you use these principles to have your life work? And our wonderful Charlotte's offering a course on cultural diversity. Because, you know, one of the things that happens for us sometimes is we get to thinking that our way of understanding reality is reality. <laughs> oh, I love that, right? And so this wonderful looking at diversity and how different people approach this thing called reality in life and how we can be more conscious and aware and awake. And so we're starting that and we've got some 
uh, a prosperity class coming up, and we've got a, um, our practitioners are back into it, baby. They have rested long enough. They are ready to pray. <laughs> So life is good. I always love the energy that comes with a, with a new year. And so we're looking at who do we want to become and how do we want to show up. And I'm looking at how do I want to show up differently this year? Who do I want to be? So I thought, you know, I, as I look back over the last few years and some of the goals and some of the intentions I set for myself, you know, some of the things I set I accomplished and some I didn't. And so I look at that and I think, you know, maybe this year. This year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accomplish my goals. So I am setting a clear intention to gain more weight, to procrastinate more, to drink more, and maybe to start smoking. I don't know, you know? <laughs> so that I can feel good at the end of the year, like, yes! <laughs> I'm kidding, really. <laughs> I am really kidding about that. Um, so, as I said, I spent a week in Oklahoma and with my family, who I adore. I adore. And yet, they are my family. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? And there should really be a three-day rule, but I spent a week <laughs> with my beloved mother without internet. I know. I know. So I got to look at my addiction again, uh, you know, and just we got to look at this wonderful thing that happens. One, I got to really look at, wow, how dependent our lives are on this thing called Internet that really didn't exist for most of us 20 years ago, right? And yet today our life is based on this access to the global being <laughs> called the cloud or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't understand any of it, but I do know how to use it. And I do realize I'm fairly addicted. So I was, you know, kind of jonesing through the week and <laughs> rushing off to Starbucks so I could connect, <laughs> find out what I missed, you know, right? It's not right. But um, I got to thinking about this whole idea. And so as we're starting this new uh, period, I decided I'm going to try something new called planning. I know. Um, how are you, Ricky? Okay, I sent him three months worth of titles, and he was like, what? Who did this really come from? Somebody's... <laughs> yes. So, you know, and so one of the things we're going to do is each month have a book of the month, so for those that want to participate. And this month, I'm using a wonderful book, some of you may have heard about or be familiar with, called E Squared by Pam Grout. And Pam, I like because she's irreverent and funny and, and really puts the principles that we talk about into a context that are usable. The subtitle to her book is this, Nine Do-It-Yourself Energy Experiments That Prove Your Thoughts Create Reality. Hmm. So for me, there's always this question of what are we, where are we working from? Are we working from the place of theoretical metaphysics or are we working from the place of applied metaphysics? And I know, for me, I love to contemplate the nature of things. I was just this weekend as I'm preparing, I was studying the Bhagavad Gita and quantum physics and the Bible and Ernest Holmes. And it's like, oh, this is so good and rich and wonderful. And yet then I have to go into the world and I have to show up and bring those principles into practice. And that's where we see that maybe some of us have some work to do. Yes, I do. So I love this, what she says in her book. She says, if you've read The Secret or been in metaphysical spiritual circles for any length of time, you already know your thoughts create your reality. And there's a power in the universe that can heal. And that you and you alone design your own life. Unfortunately, there's one little problem. This one itty bitty catch. You don't really believe it. <laughs> Not fully. Right? Now, I'll just speak about myself. This may or may not apply to you. 
But I think if I absolutely believed that I was the creative intelligence behind my life, that I had the power to manifest my life exactly as I want it, would it look like this? <laughs> there are some areas I say, yes, heartily, and others are like, well, you know, that's not me. <laughs> that's the economy. That's my boss. That's my family. Thank you very much, right? So perhaps in this new year as we move forward, there's some areas for growth. What I love about Pam Grout in this wonderful book is she says, here's nine experiments, and they're simple. 48 hours, do this. See what happens. And so I find that very exciting because we can spend all the time in the world studying the ins and outs, and we do, and it's all good information. Don't let me seem like that's not. But, you know, we can understand the history of new thought and how Emerson said this and Troward said this and this one said that, and all of that's wonderful. But the real question is, does my life work? Am I creating the life that I want? Am I bringing forth that highest possibility that resides in me into my life experience? And if I'm not, not to worry. We're not done yet. We're still breathing. We got time, right? So this becomes a new possibility to relook and rethink it, who we are and who we want to be and what is the life that we want to have. And so we begin by looking at a few simple ideas. One, how does change happen? Now, some of you, with clear intention, woke up January 1, and you said, this year, I will, or I won't, I don't, you know, and now it's already day five, and you've recommitted three times, <laughs> or said, I didn't. You know, I just somebody had to say something. They were going around the table, and I had to say something, right? <laughs> because what we find is our lives don't change because we decide our behavior will be different. Only for a limited amount of time. We have to have the realization that change happens because we have a change of mind. Buckminster Fuller, who was a brilliant, brilliant person, who experienced um, over-drinking, going bankrupt, having his life not work, and then had a shift in his mind that said, what could, I, what could one person do to change the world? And so Bucky Fuller says to us this, you can never change things by fighting the existing reality. To hear that. You cannot change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing models obsolete. Right? We create a new reality. So I, I am proud of you. I, I just honor and celebrate you for being here this morning. I know when I wake up at 5.30 and by 6, I usually take the puppy out, and it is cold. <laughs> oh, my God, it's cold. Right? <laughs> And so she does her business very quickly because we are not wasting time out there, right? And I think, oh, there's my bed and there's covers and quilts and, hmm. But I have this job and so I was like, okay, I guess I'll go to the job today. But, I, but you guys don't have a job. And you got out of bed anyways and braved the cold and so you jumped in your carriage and said to the horse, Ho, or whatever you say to your horse, and off you were, and here you are. Right? No, because none of us go by horse and carriage unless it's a really special moment in um, Central Park, right? Most of us get in a new model called a car. And so, we don't fight reality, we create new models and then we live from that. For us, as individuals, we have to learn to create a new model for us and then start living from that new model. But we're conditioned to think a certain way and to be a certain way. It's kind of chuckling because I was in Oklahoma and it's really wonderful. You know, I don't know if you know this, but people in the South speak differently. 
they do. They say, y'all, and, you know, come on down here, y'all. We're just going to have some dinner together, you know, and it's really lovely. And I always like, I like that southern accent. And I think, well, why do they do that? When clearly we know how to speak properly. <laughs> and yet, have you ever had anybody say to you, you guys in Utah, you speak differently, <laughs> right? And if you go to New York, wherever you go, you find people speak differently. Why is that? We begin very early to understand life around us, and we imitate what we see and hear, and then we begin to sound like the people that are around us. We do that at every level. So we set up these neural patterns in our brain that then are repeated over and over and over unless we consciously make an effort to change. And we can change an accent, right? I spend enough time in the South that two beers and a couple of other Southerners, and I'm right there. I'm yawling with them like, you know, y'all, right? I'm right there. But here, being your spiritual advisor and leader, <laughs> where we never serve beer until at least noon, um, you know, <laughs> speak properly, right? So we get conditioned to how life is. We do this with our mind all of the time. And we begin to accept and think that life is a certain way, and then we live according to that model. So if we want to have a different experience of life, we have to create a new mental model and then to begin to live as if that were true. So these nine experiments are ways that we can begin to embrace a new mental model. These classes that we offer are helping us to have a different model of reality. One of the things that I noticed in my week of family time, lots and lots and lots of family time, <laughs> was we spent a whole lot of the conversation in the past. I don't know if your family does this, but week ago, year ago, 40 years ago, the whole story, right? And we tend to think that current reality is the same as previous reality, right? And I, I thought about that and just was, I was kind of struck by, wow, some of the conversation we were like, I'm not that person, I know that person, I like that person, but I'm not that person anymore. My concept of reality is so fundamentally different today than it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Because I now believe that there is a power and an intelligence that works through me for my highest good. Not to me. Not some power that I'm trying to convince to give me what I want, but a divine creative intelligence that is working through life and expressing itself in such a way that it begins to conform to my belief and my expectation. So the, one of the things that we have to be willing to do is to learn to let go of what isn't so. Right? To let go of what isn't so. <clears throat> uh, Orville Wright one of the Wright brothers, said something very powerful. Now, think about Orville and his brother. Anyone? Wilbur, Wilbur thank you. It's so good to have Google right here in my room. Um, <laughs> so they got together and they said, you know what? We have this idea that humanity could fly. And they went to their friends and family, I'm sure, and said, hey, we're going to build a flying machine. And their friends and family said, hallelujah, we support you and we hold you in the highest light possible that you might fulfill your vision. <laughs> Just like your family would. And well-meaning people said things like, you'll never fly. If God had intended you to fly, he would have given you feathers, wings, whatever. Right? So Orville, in the midst of this, says something very powerful. He says, if we worked on the assumption that what is accepted as true is real, or excuse me, if we worked on the assumption that what is accepted as true really is true, 
then there would be little hope for advance. Want to hear it again? If we worked on the assumption that what is accepted as true really is true, then there would be little hope for advance. You see, if you think that your life is this way and it is indefinitely going to be so, <laughs> right? I just want to curl up in a little ball and cry myself to sleep, right? But we all know that our lives are a reflection of our consciousness. They are a reflection of who we are. They are a reflection of these principles manifesting themselves through us. And that if we want to have a different experience, we simply, simply change our minds. We create a new model, and then we live according to that model. So I did my review, and there's areas that I am so excited about what I created this year, last year, and some areas where I fell short. One of the ways I'm different today is I don't beat myself up for having not created everything I wanted last year. Right? It's like, hey, it's a new year. I get to manifest and create anew because I'm working with an intelligence that is resident within me. It's not outside of me. It's not overcoming that mean God that wouldn't give me what I wanted. Right? You know that mean God. Didn't give you what you wanted either, right? It is about embracing something different. But I got to let go of what isn't so. I can't keep saying my life doesn't work. See, Linda, you're helping me already. My life doesn't work. That it's, uh, that it's hard to make money. That, that you got to work hard and you got to struggle and you can't get a hit. All that stuff that people say. I may have heard this week, I won't attribute it to a source, but I may have heard in one of my conversations, well, that's all fine for you, but I'm practical. None of this airy, fairy, believe what you want, create your life the way you want it. Be practical. Have a good limitation and live accordingly. <laughs> no one actually said that, I want you to know, right? just so fascinating. So we are going to look at this idea that we are creative beings. And the reason this is possible is there is a field of potentiality. Pam Grout calls it a field of potentiality, or FP. That there is an intelligence, a creative essence, a creative source, something that is behind all of this. All of the religions speak to it in their own way at the heart and the essence. Quantum physics is teaching us that there is a consciousness, for lack of a better word, that is expressing behind all of this. You see, we've moved out of Newtonian physics, which said that essentially the universe is a series of building blocks, and if we can just small, find the smallest building block, we'll understand this, to saying, wow, this whole quantum physics thing, this is a crazy universe. Stuff is happening that just doesn't make sense. You can change something here, and it changes over here. How is that so? Because there's a field of potentiality. I refer to it as the field of infinite possibility. The field of infinite possibility. FIP, for those of you that like. <laughs> my, my new three-letter word for God is FIP, you know? <laughs> a field of infinite possibility, and that the universe is bringing itself into expression and into manifestation, and it creates over and over and over and over, all of the time, that reality is coming into being. Now, some of us know Albert Einstein. Heard of him, right? And Albert Einstein created a lovely formula. Who knows what it is? Great. Who can explain it? There's always a couple. There's like two. The rest of us are like, oh, it means like. So I go on the Google to look because I have internet again. Thank you, God. And I could. <laughs> so I click on this little 10-minute video of quantum physics easily understood. And three minutes in, it was like, not so easily for me. But what I do know in essence is it is saying energy and matter are the same. Energy and matter are the same. It's almost as if the way I kind of look at it is there's this thing called moisture, and moisture can show up 
as a cloud. It can show up as a raindrop. It can show up as ice. It can show up as snow. It can show up as an ocean. It can show up in all these different ways, but the essence of it is moisture. So some great metaphysician or physician or somebody said, you know, it's as if energy is frozen into matter. It's interesting for me to think of it, if you're watching a fan, if the fan is turned off, you see the individual blades, and between the individual blades, you see space. But when you turn that on high, it's circling so fast, it looks like a solid object. (laughs) Amplify that kind of gazillion times, and you see what's happening in our universe, that it is really space, but it is popping into being, and it appears as if it's real and if it's form. But what I'm going to suggest to you, metaphysicians would su- suggest to you, that we don't change reality by changing form. We change reality by changing the energy. And the energy is behind that. So we're, uh, Albert Einstein said this E equals MC squared, and we're all like, cool. It's interesting to me. It's the source and understanding of nuclear physics, which, of course, humanity said, hey, a new way to blow each other up. Cool. I'm still thinking there may be other possibilities, but, you know, I don't know. But he also said this, and I want you to hear this. He said, everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of humanity. This is Ern- I mean, this is not Ernest Holmes who said something very similar. This is Albert Einstein, premier scientific mind of our thought. Is that, and what quantum physicists are telling us is that when we really begin to understand what's happening, the universe is not a series of building blocks. It is really thought. It is intelligence. And it is manifesting itself. And so into that intelligence, you and I live and have our being. We're working with it all of the time. So if that is so, my New Year's intention is I think I'm going to start using that intelligence to my advantage as opposed to my disadvantage. If that infinite being is wanting to express through me, and it is expressing according to my belief and my thought and my word, why would I keep arguing for my limitation? Why would I keep saying how hard it is? Why would I keep wanting to repeat that that kind of stuff never happens in my family? Right? Does it care? I don't think it cares. It's just like, I'm just being FIP. Here I am. Fippin' away, baby, just fippin' away. You create the mold you want, and I'm available. So for me, this year is about creating that new model, creating that new possibility, creating that new consciousness for myself and for us as a community of what else is possible when we recognize that we're not trying to overcome anything, but simply trying to allow something. We're allowing the universe to have its full expression through us and as us. I was going to tell you about the Bhagavad Gita today, but, you know, time moves on. What I will say to you is that if you study at the heart of some of these religious traditions, and you take away the metaphor and the mythology behind it, you see this understanding of creation. You can find it in the Bhagavad Gita. You can find it in the Old Testament. You can find it in the New Testament. You can find it in so many different ways that there's a creative intelligence. We may have called it God or Allah or some other nifty, cool name. But what we call it is not what's important. It's to understand what the mystics through the ages have understood is that there is an intelligence at work and that we can live in that and live in such a way that greater good is produced in our life. That if we want to be seeing peace in our world, then we have to be peace. If we want to have abundance in our life, we have to be abundant. Most of us get confused. 
We think, gosh, if matter would just change, my energy would be completely different. Right? I'm going to go get me some of that matter. (laughs) Call it what you will. But when we get that it's energy, then we simply work at the mind level, at the consciousness level, to release that which no longer serves us, to stop affirming what we don't want, to stop spending our time in negative creative visualization. For those of you who don't understand that, that's called worry. (laughs) Right? Isn't that what we do when we're worrying? Gee, let me imagine the worst possible thing that could happen right now. Huh, it happened. I don't get it. (laughs) Rather, we could spend our time and our intention in creating the life we want. Why I like Pam Grout and this lovely book is she's giving us some really concrete ways to say, here's an experiment. Saying, go do this experiment. Prove there for yourself that this stuff works. In simple and easy ways. And when you get good at it in little ways, then you go, wow, if I could create $5, what could I do if I expanded my thinking, right? I shared earlier, because I like to share things about us from time to time. I was looking at our year in numbers and Um, you know, all the stuff that happens behind the scenes and why we have boards and all that sort of thing. And and I looked at that and and uh, we keep track of how many people show up on Sundays and what's the money that comes in and all that. So I looked at how how did we fare in 2013 compared to 2012. And as it turns out, in 2013, we had a few less people than in 2012. Now, we also skipped a Sunday, so I want credit for that, right? If you could have come, you would have, and we would have eked over. (laughs) Our collective giving, however, was $60,000 more. (laughs) What's different? We're different. We had a new vision of possibility that we would create our own home. And we knew that we couldn't do it doing it the way we always were. And so we set new intention and we each looked at our own commitment and we raised up to a higher level of being and it's evidenced in greater money. We do that collectively, we do it individually. To me, that's very exciting. It's like I always like to say, it's not like we have a different congregation. Not like Warren Buffett showed up in one day and said, hey, here's the, right? It's just us having a little stretch forward in consciousness so that we create this new reality. Now we get to create our next reality and our next possibility. And we keep looking at, am I telling the truth about who I am? And I would say for most of us, it's about 5% of the time. We come on Sunday, we hear a powerful message, we stand up, we say five sentences, we sit back down, and we're like, cool, I am enlightened, I love these people, thank you for being a blessing in my life, and we are rock stars, and God, life is good, and I'm powerful, and oh, man, yes, thank you. And we leave here, and we get in our car, and we go on the highway where they let anybody that wants to drive, (laughs) even the unenlightened. And so somebody cuts us off, somebody does something silly, and we all of a sudden turn into something else other than enlightened souls. We say things about them, we say things about their mother, we say things about, you know, we say things that we should not be saying. Right? So there's theoretical metaphysics and there's applied metaphysics. This is the easy part. Being in church together, easy, it's good. Being in the world, take some practice. Go visit your family for seven days without internet. You see how you do, right? (laughs) I was good. I love them. Gosh, I love them. But it was immersion. It was immersion, right? 
Helped my workout program, I've got to say that. Got to go to the gym, I'll see you in a while. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I need to, it's probably time for us to go, isn't it? I'm glad to be back, can you tell? Back in enlightened Utah, never thought I'd say those words. <laughs> ah, life is good. So here's what I want to tell you. We all live in the same FIP. We all live in the same field of infinite possibility. We just get to be a choice in the midst of that, of what are we going to bring forth? Not making anybody wrong. If your life's not perfect, join the crowd. But know that the potential, the possibility, resides within each one of us. If we awaken to who we are, as Dana was singing about, and we start to live from that place, all manner of things shift and change and become possible for us. I wish you a very happy new year. Know that you are loved and supported in being fully who you are. Let us pray. I'm feeling a prayer coming on. Get up here. <laughs> I can't be praying without any music. Get up here. <laughs> so I invite you to just take a deep breath. Feel the possibility that is surrounding us, that is within us, that is seeking its highest self-expression. There is but one life, one power, one infinite being. And that it is not separate from us, but rather it is expressing through us and as us. So we open our hearts to the presence of divine love, our minds to infinite wisdom. We set a new intention to bring forth the highest possibility that is within us. We know that, as Ernest Holmes says, it is the infinite possibility seeking its birth through us that makes it so. And so we're simply giving sway to that. We're allowing that greater something that is resident in our heart, in our mind, in our soul to be expressed. We declare the reality that wholeness is revealing itself as health, as well-being, as vitality. We are speaking the word of truth as we know that we are abundant beings right here, right now, for we are one with this infinitely abundant source and supply. We know that love is in truth the only reality, that self-givingness of spirit. And so we choose in this moment to let go of that which isn't so. We choose to forgive ourselves and each other as we call forth this greater possibility. How good it is to rest in the awareness and the assurance that life is good and all is well, that we are co-creative beings in each and every moment, so we joyfully accept the responsibility to bring forth that highest possibility. How good it is to stand in this presence and to know that something magnificent is happening through us. And so I give thanks. I invite you in this moment, if there is a burden on your heart, to be willing to release it. This is a new moment, a new instant of creation. I invite you to bring forth your highest possibility to give thanks. And so we know that we are blessed. Blessed beyond measure. And we extend a blessing from this place. First, we bless this spiritual community, knowing that we are divinely guided, that we are divinely supplied in our highest possibility, that we carry forth a new vision, that we are a healing presence in the world. We extend a blessing to our brothers and sisters around the planet as we're simply holding the high watch, the vision for a world that works for everyone. Where every person, man, woman, and child is recognized as a part of the divine. We're sensing and feeling and knowing a planet at peace. And as our tradition, we bless all priests, all rabbis, all ministers, all teachers of every faith. We honor and celebrate diversity. We honor and celebrate the many ways that the divine expresses itself. How good it is to know this truth. And so I'm simply knowing this truth and releasing it into that law of mind. Knowing that it brings forth 
the highest good for all concerned. And so it is with profound joy and deep, deep gratitude that I simply release this word, knowing that it is so, as together we say, and so it is. <laughs>